Okay. In order to fire a handgun fast and accurately, um, there's really five things we need to know how to do. There's grip, how we hold the gun in our hands, stance, how we hold our arm in our bodies, sight alignment, trigger control, and follow through. And we're gonna break this down into bite-sized chunks. Today, we're only gonna deal with grip. Now, when we want to um, fire a handgun, what we want to happen is we wanna be able to fire it accurately, and we wanna be able to fire it fast and accurately at the same time. Now, our hands are the part of our body that interact the most directly with the gun. So being able to fire the gun fast and accurately has a huge amount to do with how we hold the gun in our hands. Now, let's think about what we want to happen so that we can be able to fire the gun fast and accurately. What we want to do is we want to start out with the gun pointed perfectly where we want the bullet to go. And then when the gun recoils, we want the gun to move very little and come right back to the same spot. Now, I'm not going to say that there aren't targets that are just, you know, so big and so close and so easy that we don't even really need to aim. You know, once we've built an, a good index, we can just point the gun where we want it to go and, you know, we don't even need to verify with the sights. But in general, if we want to fire the gun fast and accurately, we need to aim. We need to be able to see the sights. And we need to stay on the sights constantly. We need to have a, a continuous sense of the sights. We need to see them move, and come back to the same spot so we can aim every shot. It's gonna be a lot easier to do that if when you fire the gun, it doesn't move very much. <laughs> and your sights barely move and come right back to the same spot. And that has an immense amount to do with how we hold the gun. Now, to start with, I have my unloaded Wilson EDCX9 here. Let's think about what has to happen in order for this gun to flip its muzzle. Well, what's going to have to happen? You know, we, we always talk about muzzle flip, you know, the front of the gun comes up. But what allows that to happen, if you really think about it, is the grip is moving in our hands. And the way that it's going to have to move if we're going to have this gun flip its muzzle is the grip tang is going to have to move down. And the grip, and especially the bottom of the grip, the back strap, is going to have to move forward and up. And the front strap, especially the bottom of the front strap, is also going to have to move forward and up like that. So if we don't want the front of the gun to move very much, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stop the grip tank from moving. We're basically going to have to like build a ledge underneath it so it can't move at all. <clears throat> and we're going to have to build a wall behind the back of the grip and we're going to have to have a C-clamp that comes around the front of the grip. So this can't move down, this can't move forward, this can't move forward. Now, I want you to imagine with me for a moment <clears throat> that this gun is just floating in space. It's weightless. There are no other forces acting on the gun, and the gun fires with no other forces acting on the gun, the gun would move straight to the rear. Now, we know that when we fire the gun, that's not what happens. What happens is the gun flips its muzzle. And the reason it does that is because the gun is on a pivot. 
which is our hand. And our hand is below the line of energy that the gun is giving us. Now, the line of energy that um, the gun is giving us is, is basically the hole through the center of the barrel. You know, the bullet goes this way, the shell casing comes this way and pushes on the slide. Now, that line of energy we, we call the bore line or the bore axis. Now, because our bore axis is above the web of our hand, the gun has leverage to flip its muzzle on us. Now, we know that, you know, all else being equal, same gun weight, same cartridge, a gun that has a high bore axis where the barrel rides way up above your hand is going to have more leverage to flip its muzzle, and therefore it's going to have more muzzle flip and more perceived recoil than a gun that has a low bore axis where the barrel is really close to the web of your hand. And that's why guns like um, the SIG P220 series, um, the Springfield XD, have more perceived recoil and more muzzle flip than something that has a really low bore axis, like a 1911 or Glock. Okay, now this is an important point because the closer the way we grip the gun gets the bore line to our hand, the less leverage the gun is going to have to flip its muzzle, the less perceived recoil we're going to have, and the less muzzle flip we're going to have. So let's start with how we're going to build our grip. To start with, we want the gun the center of the back strap to go into the center of the web of our hand. And there's a few reasons for this. Um, one, this is going to make the gun point really naturally for us. Also, it's going to ensure that the recoil energy is going to be absorbed by the soft, fleshy web of our hand. Now, what I'm kind of warning you away from here is what some people call the H grip, some people call it the J grip. But what that means is um, some people have a tendency to put the gun into their hand with it kind of off center, like that. And you tend to see this on people who are trying to fire, fire a gun where um, the grip is really too big for their hand, there's a long reach to the trigger, um, or they feel the trigger pulls really too heavy for them. For whatever reason, they don't feel like they can get enough of their finger on the trigger to pull the trigger with the um, gun properly centered in the web of their hand. They have to kind of fudge their hand around like this so they can get more of their finger on the trigger. And there's a, a couple problems with this. For one thing, because you're starting off, you know, we're both right-handed, so because you're starting off with the gun pointed to the right, even if you compensate for that and straighten it out, every time you fire the gun, it's going to track to the right. Also, what you're going to be doing here is you're going to generate the recoil energy right into your base thumb joint. It's going to hurt <laughs> every time you pull the trigger. And if you do a lot of this, you're going to damage your base thumb joint and give yourself artificial arthritis for the rest of your life. So don't do that. <laughs> Center the gun in the web of your hand. Now, we are going to get as high up on this grip as we can. We don't want to have a gap between the underside of the grip tang and the top of the web of our hand. Now, ideally, we want to see like that half moon effect of flesh coming up over the grip tang. Now, the reason we want to do that is if we fire the gun, we, you know, we've got a gap like that, this is going to give the gun an immense head start to come back and whack us in the hand because the gun's going to try and fill in that gap under recoil. 
If we get up hard under the grip tang, the gun can't do that because it's already there. Now, so center the gun in the web of your hand, get hard up underneath the grip tang with no gap. Now, your middle through little fingers are going to extend and join and go around the front strap. Unless we're actually firing the gun, we're going to keep our index finger, strangely enough, indexed on the side of the guns, uh, <laughs> the side of the gun above the trigger guard on the frame, off the trigger. Now, like we don't want to have a gap here, we also don't want to have a gap here. We want to get our middle finger hard up underneath the trigger guard. And our three fingers are just going to wrap around the front strap onto the other side of the gun. Uh, now, and to start with, we're going to flag our thumb high. And this is going to become really important later on. Now, I don't like the term um, strong hand and weak hand. Because to me, that kind of uh, reinforces us to accept inferior performance from this hand. So I, I call it the master hand and the support hand. Really, I should just call it my right strong hand and my left strong hand. <laughs> but um, this is what our master hand grip is going to look like. Like so. Okay. <clears throat> Now, a huge amount, and try to get up higher, higher on the grip. Start out, like, take your hand and just put the gun in it and just grind your hand up there. Try to get as high up on this grip as you possibly can. All right. Now, a huge amount of our recoil control and a huge amount of how we get the gun to track consistently. In other words, when it moves, it comes right back to the same spot, has to do with how we hold the gun with our support hand. Now, the, the, the key to this is we're gonna roll our wrist forward. In, in other words, we're gonna go like this. Okay, I mean, just roll your wrist as far forward as you can and lock your tendons. Now, remember I told you it's going to be important that we have this thumb flagged high. That's because when we do that, this is going to open up the entire side of the grip panel. And specifically, it's going to open up the rear of the grip panel. So we've got our hand rolled forward. Now, like we don't have a gap here, and we don't have a gap here, we don't want to have a gap here either. We're going to get this finger hard up under the trigger guard. And if we get this finger hard up under the trigger guard, that is just immensely going to cut down on our incidence of shots pulled low. I mean, we would have to move the gun through our entire hand to pull a shot low. Now, so we get this finger hard up under the trigger guard, and then I like to put my index finger in between the index finger and the middle finger of my master hand, and then the other fingers just go between the knuckles like a finger groove grip. Your bottom finger just, you know, kind of comes underneath because it has to. And when you do that, you look at how hard that cams your index finger up under the trigger guard. Okay, it, it just became very, very difficult to pull shots low. Now, over here on the other side of the gun, we've got our wrist rolled forward. The drumstick on our hand is going to come in and it's going to touch the side of the gun. And we have our wrist rolled forward. And basically, this is what our two-handed grip looks like. We don't have a gap here. We don't have a gap here. We don't have a gap here. And we don't have a gap between the heels of our hands 
and the wrist of our hand. So basically, I've just got, you know, flesh and bone 360 degrees around this gun. And I've got my wrist locked down. Okay. And what this does is it basically, it makes it pretty, pretty impossible for the gun to move very much. Now, let's talk about something else for a moment. <clears throat> when we are gripping this gun, what we're going to do is we're basically going to make a C clamp out of our left hand and squeeze with side to side pressure. But also, when we talk about the um, getting the gun to not move very much and come right back to the same spot, and we talk about the importance of the straight thumb grip, what a lot of people think is they think the important part of it is just having your thumb pointed forward, and it's not. That, that is just kind of like a side effect of the important thing. The important thing is having the wrist rolled forward and locked down. So what a lot of people do, because they don't understand that the wrist is the important thing, um, they'll kind of come up with a, this sort of misapplication of the technique where they have their, their wrist straight, but their thumbs forward, and they kind of wind up doing something like this. And this is bad on a couple of levels. Um, for one thing, you don't get the advantage of having your wrist locked down, so you get a lot of muzzle flip, but also you wind up with your thumb right under the slide stop, which means that you're pushing up on the slide stop, and when the gun recoils, you're gonna lock the action open with rounds still in the magazine. And a gun on which this is very likely to occur is lock because of location of the slide stop and also your Springfield XD. Now, if you roll your wrist forward, instead of Get, having your thumb right under the slide stop, what's going to happen is the slide stop's going to ride in that little hollow there, and it won't be a problem. Now, I'm going to teach you a little trick here that is going to cut down on muzzle flip immensely. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to grip the gun really hard. But when I say grip the gun really hard, I'm not saying, you know, just like try to make a fist with both hands and squeeze on the gun. That's not really going to accomplish anything. And it's going to be very tiring. And it's also going to generate weird forces all over the gun that kind of like make it do a hula dance and recoil and just fly all over the place. And that's not what we want. So what we are going to do is we're going to put counter rotational force onto the grip. Or as I call it, the juice bottle theory of how to grip a handgun. So I want you to imagine with me that we have this juice bottle. And we say to ourselves, okay, I'm going to put my left hand on this juice bottle cap, and I am going to open this bottle by turning the cap counterclockwise. I'm going to put my right hand on the juice bottle cap, and I'm going to close it by turning it clockwise. Okay. That works. 
But what if I were to say, okay, I'm going to put both hands on the cap, and I'm going to try and unscrew it by turning my left hand counterclockwise, and I'm going to try and tighten it by turning my right hand clockwise at the same time. What's going to happen is the juice bottle cap is not going to move at all. Because with your hands cranking in opposite directions at the same time, it can't move to the left, it can't move to the right. All that's going to happen is you're going to wind up ripping the juice bottle cap really hard and it's not going to move at all. So, what we do is we're going to take the heel of this hand and we're, get, we're actually going to try and get as much of our palm as possible behind the grip. We're going to take the heel of this hand and like grind it in, I mean just try and get it behind the grip. And then this hand is going to go like this, and we're going to drive the heel of the hand into the right back side of the grip. And then we're going to get this hand as, you know, much behind, much of it behind the grip as we can, and it's going to go in the opposite direction. And when that happens, and it's not really as high energy a thing as you would think. It's just basically like if you're, you start with your hands like this and you just go. And, and actually it's the fact that you're kind of like pulling on these fingers as you crank around it causes your grip to get a lot harder, but you're not really putting that much energy into it. It's not like you're going like this and like this, you're going like this, okay? And when that happens, now remember I told you we wanna get as hard up underneath the grip tang as we can. You know, we wanna like build this ledge underneath it. So the grip tang can't move downwards. Well, Let's see if you can see this on the camera. Now, I'm, I'm holding the gun, you know, with my hand hard up underneath the grip tank. That looks pretty good, right? Now, watch what happens when I, when I apply counter-rotational force to my grip. You see that? See how much higher my hand got up, how much harder it got underneath the grip tank? Now, I'm going to... Demonstrate this with a Glock because it's actually really easy to see on a Glock because of the shape of the grip tank. Okay, looks like I'm, I'm pretty hard up underneath it, right? Watch what happens when I apply counter-rotational force. You see that? Okay. So, what's going to happen here when we apply counter-rotational force is it's going to drive the web of our hand up hard underneath the grip tang. And also, because we have a huge amount of this hand behind the grip on this side, and we're driving the heels of our hands together, what this is going to do is it's going to give us a very, very hard grip on the gun. If we, you know, take our hand off, we have any sort of texturing on the grip, you know, it's going to look like that. You know, we're going to have a waffle pattern on our hands. <clears throat> now, let's, let's think about how our, the heels of our hands are going to make. Because, you know, we talk about mating the heels of our hands. You know, we don't want to have any gap between the heels of our hands. It's important to understand 
we're not actually mating the heels of our hands by like taking the heels of our hands and going like that. What's actually happening is we're putting the drumstick of this hand ahead of the drumstick on this hand. So it looks like that. Now, if you think about it, you've got this bump here at the bottom of the drumstick of your hand where your hand meets your wrist. And then you've got this little notch here at your base thumb joint. You can feel it, like a little, right where this bone meets this bone, it's a little notch, okay? Little bump, little notch. Take the bump, put it in the notch. And then you're gonna find that this thumb is gonna come right down, right behind the base joint of your thumb, and it's gonna all fit together like it was meant to. So we're not actually really mating the heels of our hand per se. What's happening is the heel of this hand is actually touching our wrist behind. So it's basically drumstick behind drumstick. And what this is going to allow us to do is to really take this part of our hand and just drive it in behind the grip. Okay? Like so. So, if, if you know, I, I'm going to try and kind of, you know, take this hand away so you, so you can see. But basically, we're getting this in like this, okay? And this part of our hand is behind this part of our hand, like so. And then we just apply counter-rotational force. Now, we're, we're gonna talk about arm position a bit more when we get into stance, but I just wanna talk about it now in relation to how we apply counter-rotational force. Um, you know, you may have been um, taught to shoot from an isosceles stance, you know, both arms straight. Um, the problem with that is it makes it hard to apply counter-rotational force because it pulls the bottom of our hands apart. And what we want is we want to basically build this wall behind the back of the grip, where our hands are just like that. And what I'm going to just extend my arms out. Watch what happens to the bottom of my hands when I do that. Okay? Pulls the bottom of my hands apart. And also, a lot of people are very into the concept where you take your elbows and you like rotate them toward the outside. And the theory there is that you are, you're getting your pivot points as close in line to the bore as possible. You know, not just your hand, but your elbows and your shoulders. You can get them all in a line. But also there's a problem with that. Okay, watch what happens to the heels of my hands when I rotate my elbows out. See, it also pulls the bottom of my hands apart. So remember, it, it's very important that the grip tang doesn't move and the front strap doesn't move and the back strap doesn't move. So what we need to do is have the heels of our hands mated behind the grip, or, you know, actually it's like this. Now, the, the only way we're gonna be able to do that is if we have our, both arms slightly bent. And, 
you know, we call this the modified isosceles stance. I actually call it the diamond technique because when you look at it from above or below, your arms kind of look like a diamond. Now, there, there's a theory in martial arts called the unbendable arm. And when you're hitting someone, you you're actually don't straighten out your arm all the way because when you do that, you lose power. And also, if you're dealing with someone who knows how to grapple, it just basically turns your arm into a fulcrum that they can do all sorts of horrible things to. But it, it's also, it's not a very stable thing. I mean, it's really easy to just move this arm around. On the other hand, if you have the arm bent too much, it's easy to collapse your arm. Which is one of you know the great flaws of the Weaver stance, where you have both arms bent. It, it just gives you a lot of muzzle flip because your guns, your arms tend to accordion as you're firing the gun. Well, what I, I want you to do is like put your arm out, lock it out, and you can see. I mean, it's just really easy to move your arm. Around. Now start moving your just put a slight break in your elbow, and you'll see. Okay, my arm collapses really easy. Put a little more. Now, if you bend it a lot, again, it'll collapse really easily. But what you're going to find eventually is there's a particular point of bend in your arm. And, and don't get caught up on trying to make your arms look like mine because it's different for everyone. But for me, it's that, it's that much. And when you hit that point, you're going to find suddenly your arm won't collapse. It won't move at all. Your tendons just lock up. And it's the same thing for your other arm. Now with me, and maybe it's because it's my left arm instead of my right arm, I, that point is actually a slightly greater amount of bend for my left arm than my right arm. So it's, it's not necessarily parallel. You know, it might be. And it, you know, it might be for you, that you know, it's more been with the left arm, more been with the right arm, whatever. So don't you know get hung up thinking you have to make your arms look like mine because everyone's different. But for me, it looks like this. So take find out what the amount of bend it takes to both arms to give you the unbendable arm with your left gun, with your uh, left hand, your left arm and your right arm, and then apply counter-rotational force to the grip using that amount of arm bend. And lock your tendons in your wrist, your forearm, your elbow, all the way down your arm. And what you're going to find when you do that is you wind up with an arm and um, an arm position and a way of gripping the gun that allows the gun to, I mean, it just does not move very much at all when you fire the gun. And that's, that's a huge part of how you grip the gun. So when all is said and done, it's kind of going to look like this. And we have now come to the end of our first training session. Uh, in our next session, we will talk about stance, how you hold your body while you're shooting. The end. <laughs>